disgusting. It's disgusting and we ate it. Okay, the true food facts from around the world and throughout history by James Solheim and illustrated by Eric Brace. And we left off about insects. Okay, so it says most countries. That means in most countries, people eat some kind of insect. All right, and this is how it starts. The Australian honey ant stores so much of a sugary fluid in its body that its hind end swells to a globe big enough to eat. People bite the bug's end off to get at the sweet stuff inside. It's almost the same as eating honey from bees, but with an extra touch of insect flavor. Termites are a gourmet food to many Africans. People eat fried grasshoppers in many parts of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, and pioneer <coughs> Americans boiled locusts in soup. The famous Greek philosopher Aristotle said that cicadas taste best with their eggs inside of them. And then... There's some little birdies in a tree here. And these are really cute. I love these little cute cartoons that they've put through the book. And it says, I want termites. I want grubs. And this one says, I want a poem. <laughs> okay, so you know how there have been different poems throughout here. This one is called Bob White, Bob White. What shall we eat tonight? Silkworm pizza, grubs and pies, caterpillar and termite fries. Who will eat them? Whooper will, and so will I. Fried grasshoppers, locust stew, candied crickets, and with honeydew. Who tried such treats? Katie did. Uh, and I did, too. How many of you have heard of a Katie did? Okay, that's kind of a joke. A Katie did is an insect. It's a kind of bug. All right, and so that's why they put the bug, the name of the bug in the poem. Pile on that protein. So here's going to be some facts about bugs. Spiders and flies may not look like much, but as protein providers, they're at the top of the heap. Okay, so there's actually more protein in spiders than there are in steak, or cooked beef, or hamburger, okay, or housefly uh, pupae, which is like the worms, or dried grasshoppers, or fried termites, mm -hmm. smoked caterpillars. They all have more protein in it than beef, okay? Now, um... We're going to read about flower salad. Okay, so this is about flowers. Flower salad. Around many countries in the world, many countries worldwide. In a world where flowers can be poison, you might be... No, they mean rabbits. Rabbits stew. Not, not hare stew. Rabbit stew. Okay, but a rabbit, a hare is another name for a rabbit. Ancient Romans cooked rose petals with animal brains to make pudding. And America had no dandelions till immigrants brought them from Europe. People fry the petals in pancakes and eat the young leaves in salad or scrambled eggs. Okay? And again, remember, don't try this at home. Okay, so don't go home on a nice sunny spring day and dig up the dandelions and then put them in your scrambled eggs. Do not do that. Okay, remember, we heard of a disclaimer at the beginning of this book that told you not to do the things you heard about in this book. All right, and then there's a little... Um, with the speech bubbles and the sheep is dandelion scrambled eggs? Yuck. And this dandelion is saying, and now a perfumed poem. And there's a poem. And the cow says, I guess eating eggs is a little gross now that you mention it. All right. And the poem says, some call it a bouquet. My love gave me a single white rose. My love gave me a dandelion's grow. My love gave me the violets do. So I made a salad. That's the poem, okay? It went from being kind of lovey-dovey to eating it, all right? The gold mine in the garden. Saffron, the world's costliest spice, comes from flowers. Workers remove three tiny tips from a type of crocus blossom to make the spice. It takes 225,000 tips to make one pound of saffron. Because this work takes so much time, a pound can cost up to $4,000. One pound, which is not very heavy, right? Just a little bit can be $4,000. Would you want to pay $4,000 for a pound of something? No. no, I wouldn't either. Medieval kings and queens loved saffron, as do Middle Eastern cooks today. Sometimes people paid more for this golden spice than they did for gold itself. All right, I want you to turn and talk to a friend about what this book is making you think about so far. All right, next is a uh, seaweed. So in most countries, people, some, kind of, some people eat seaweed, some kind yeah. of seaweed. Ooh. On the island of Fiji, 
People eat crunchy seaweed mixed with fermented coconut milk. And fermented means spoiled. Okay, so the milk is spoiled. The coconut milk is spoiled. East Coast Canadians, so that means in Canada, just above us, and you can see it right on the red there. Okay, kind of where your foot is. Yep, right up in there. All right, they eat seaweed snacks instead of Almost everybody who lives by the sea eats ocean vegetables. And these underwater treats find their way onto <coughs> more inland tables every day. And inland means someplace that's not by the ocean. So if we talk about the United States, it's all this area here that is not by ocean. Okay? Now, we have, and now for a poem, and now a poem for bird brains. Oh, all right, yeah. it's a bird up there saying it. Okay? In my salad sea, in my oh, salad sea, I'll swim and dream and eat seaweed with oyster cream and pick my teeth with a seahorse tail and ride to dinner on a whale. Yeah. Oh, I'll never need to leave the sea where the fish are fresh and the salad's free. Yeah. You have already <laughs> eaten seaweed. This is the title. If you have ice cream off those ice crystals and read the ingredients list on the container, you'll find cara. I don't know how to say it, but carrageenan in the recipe. And it looks like this. Carrageenan. In the recipe for most ice cream sold in America, carrageenan comes from a kind of seaweed, often called Irish moss. Many foods contain seaweed products. The sea's best weeds often show up in frozen foods, cakes, pies, and brand name toppings like hot fudge and salad dressing. Look for agar, carrageenan, and alginates on the labels of your favorite foods. You might find out that you just ate seaweed for lunch. I want you to turn and talk what you're thinking about. Another bitter lichen gives Icelanders a nutritious flower. So people who live in Iceland. Icelanders. A nutritious flower. Rock tripe fed George Washington's starving troops at Valley Forge. Lichen is actually two kinds of things growing together. Fungi and tiny plants related to seaweed. By teaming up, they thrive where very few plants can live. It's two gross foods in one. Questions? <laughs>